This is a biluga skin harvested from Huakta by our local hunters. Good, good, good. My music is a mix of traditional Inuit storytelling with folk, pop rock, indie. Someone came up with the term Inuindi, and I like that. <laughs> I write mainly in Inuktitut because it's my mother tongue. I like to incorporate Inuit legends. I love to incorporate throat singing because it's very rhythmic. Growing up, throat singing was only heard on the radio. For decades and decades, um, throat singing was shunned um, by missionaries, Catholic missionaries, and they had a lot of influence on, on the Inuit. In the 70s or 80s, an elder in Puvirnituk urgently requested to the women who knew how to throat sing to start teaching the younger generation before we lose it. I never thought I would be able to throat sing because listening to it on the radio, it just felt like uh, it's something impossible for me to learn. But seeing my peers inspired me. I had a friend who knew how to throat sing and I wanted her to teach me. So at 18, that's when I started practicing. <laughs> it's been hundreds of years. It's not exactly known when throat singing started, but it's women who started throat singing. And it was a form of entertainment while their husbands were out on the land for weeks and months at a time. It's a game between two women. I sing about my own experiences. I come from a lot of trauma, like many, many indigenous 
people that stem from colonization, abuse. I wanted to see if I can really feel joy, authentic joy, because I never felt it. As a young adult, I thought it was impossible. Oh Tinga was a heavy song for me to write because we as a family were going through a very difficult time after my nieces who were sisters took their lives uh, 10 months apart. That song is basically me begging my kids, my nieces, my nephews, my son, all the children to keep going. I'm telling them they're capable, that they don't have to be afraid, that they're strong, that they're wise. I'm telling them to not give up. Aksan is usually very calm and quiet, but when she's tattooing, she knows what she's doing, so she has this very different focus. It's kind of strange because she's never like that to me as her mom, but when she's tattooing, she's like scary. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd do this work. My daughter is about to mark me these uh, mother tattoos. I'm terrified. See you later. <laughs> I've been wanting this for a long time. Having tattoos as Inuit women is a sign of strength and beauty. If we can sit through this pain, we can sit through any pain. For me to be able to throat sing in front of an international crowd, I love it. Every time I travel somewhere far to do what I love gives me so much happiness. Made it. It's uh, something very precious to us because we almost lost it through colonization. We were ashamed for it by the Catholic missionaries, by the government. So for it to have survived colonization and come back strongly is something that we're very proud of. And to sing it in a church will be like, uh, take that. Nipika Pia Suit
sana Yan epik sivurat sana Ni verse isu malona Suru sit sabilo sana